In this video, I'm going to solve the don't overreact challenge from Hack the Box. I've talked about Hack the Box a few times on this channel, but you may not know that in addition to having a bunch of servers and machines you can practice hacking into, they also have a bunch of challenges. And these challenges are broken up into different categories, like you have hardware hacking, you have reverse engineering challenges, you have game hacking challenges, you have forensics challenges, all kinds of different ones. And one of the categories they have is mobile. And a lot of these involve downloading an APK from an Android app and then doing some sort of analysis and trying to hack that app to figure out a flag. And since I've made so many videos on Android hacking, I thought I'd give it a shot solving some of these mobile challenges and doing a little bit of a walkthrough on how to solve some of them. If you didn't know, Hack the Box does have a pretty strict policy on posting solutions and walkthroughs to these challenges or any of the stuff on their site before they've been retired. So any of these challenges that I do want to do walkthroughs for, I do have to wait for them to be retired on the site. But one of the ones that I wanted to do a walkthrough for is already retired and that one is called Don't Overreact. And the description for this challenge just says some web developers wrote this fancy new app. It's really cool, isn't it? So I've already downloaded the APK for this challenge and I've opened up in JetX. This challenge can actually be solved entirely from static analysis and you don't have to run it on an Android device or anything. And just FYI, in case you're not familiar with Hack the Box challenges, we're typically going to be looking for a flag, which is just going to be a text string that's hidden somewhere in the app. And the format of this flag is just going to be HTB and then some sort of text inside these curly brackets. So once I open up this APK with JetX, I'm going to start looking at the main activity and some of the common places in the app to just get an idea of what we're looking at here and a lot of times with these challenges the title of the challenge or the name of the APK is going to kind of give us a hint and the name was don't overreact.apk so that kind of gives it away that this is going to be an app that was created with react native so chances are what we're going to be dealing with to find the flag is going to be something that's specific to react native and once you do a little bit of research into react native apps you might figure out that there is something specific to react native that you'll find under the assets and that's going to be this index.android.bundle file. This is going to be a big JavaScript file that has a bunch of code in it and things that's going to be kind of difficult to read through and kind of get a grasp on what all it's doing. But this file is going to be a good place to look for things like hard-coded URLs or plain text API keys and passwords, things like that that you might not find in a lot of other places in Android apps. A lot of times things like that don't get caught and end up in this file instead of places that you would normally look in an Android app. And if we look all the way down at the bottom of the URL, we see there's this hard-coded API URL and there's this debug value that is a base64 string. And it's important to note that this file doesn't actually show up in your search results in JetX. So if you were doing those normal type of things you would do with an Android app where you search for keywords, like looking for a URL endpoint or looking for an API key or things like that, any of those things that are in this index.android.bundle file are not going to show up in your search results. You can see right here that I searched for that hackthebox.eu URL and I checked all the boxes. So I'm looking through all the classes, methods, fields, codes, resources, comments, and everything. And I got zero results. But we can clearly see that in this index.android.bundle file, that URL is right there in plain text. And that's why it's important to pay attention to this file if there's ever any React Native app that you're working with. But now that I've found this base64 debug code, I'm going to go to a base64 decoder and decode it, which you should always do anytime you find base64 in any app you're working with. You should decode it and make sure they're not just encoding some sort of sensitive string in base64. And there are a thousand different ways to decode base64. I like to use CyberChef, but Burp Suite also has a decode option. There's a tool from the command line that you can use to decode it. So whatever your preference is. But I'm going to put that base64 in the input and I'm going to drag from the recipe from base64 to decode it. And there's my flag. So this was a very simple challenge. It was actually rated as very easy on Hack the Box. So it's not supposed to be a really difficult thing to do, but it is supposed to teach you a little bit about how to deal with React native apps and how to do some static analysis and maybe find some things that you wouldn't find if you weren't familiar with it. I've actually solved a lot of these mobile challenges from Hack the Box, so if you're interested, let me know and I might make some more of these walkthroughs. I've actually already filmed one other walkthrough of one of these challenges, but that challenge hasn't been retired yet, so I have to wait for them to retire it before I can post the video. But if this kind of thing is interesting to you, let me know and I will try to make more videos and I will post them as soon as they get retired. Also, before I end this video, I just want to 
to give a big shout out to Wardell Castles, who became the very first member of this channel the other day. I don't have any expectation that anyone should give me any funding for this channel. If you just watch the videos and maybe drop a like or a subscribe or a comment every now and then, that's enough for me. But Wardell Castles, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much.